We've got Carrie from the band Bad Bad Hats. How are you? Doing great, thank you. How are you? I'm doing I'm doing pretty well. Doing pretty well. Um, super excited about this. Uh, I was only just recently introduced to your band. Oh, nice. Yeah. And I love it. I absolutely love it. I uh, I'm lucky to be surrounded by music lovers, um, like a uh, Ben Travers and an AJ Jump, who kind of helped organize your show coming up at the oh, River yes. Street Jazz Cafe. Yes, awesome. Yeah. So they introduced me to you. I checked out the music. I'm like, yes, I would I would be over the moon excited about talking to them because I love their music. Great. So, yeah, so good. Well, it's got it's got this like um I'll tell you what I what I'm hearing, and then you can, you know, we'll, we'll dig into who Bad Pat Hats is. Uh okay. I'm here it's very like beachy vibes. For sure. I feel that. And a little bit of uh Cheryl Crow. I love Cheryl Crow, so I love to hear that. <laughs> I always like uh stress out about saying that stuff because yeah. <laughs> what if I say like, oh, I think you sound like um I don't know, uh Taylor Swift. You're- which is probably a great thing right now, right? I about to say I wouldn't I wouldn't hate that either, but, but I know what well, you mean. It's like say, yeah, when you bring like, up a comparison, it's yeah. always like, like I think I, I hate, hate that comparison. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's only happened to me once so far. Which, okay, good. Uh, you know, out of 185 that's, episodes, yeah. it's not bad. That's yeah. a good ratio. Yeah, I'll take it. I'll take it. But yeah, talk to me about who Bad Bad Hats is. I mean, um from Minnesota, right? That's correct. Yep. And that's where you are right now. That's where I'm right now, St. Paul, Minnesota. Very, very cool. Well, I'm in northeastern Pennsylvania, where I'll be playing on May 9th. Yeah, it's coming up so fast. I actually can't believe it. It is. I think, well, today is, it's a week today, right? Yeah. Or, uh, yeah. No. When is it May 9th? A little... Yeah, we're getting <laughs> close for sure. Yeah. <laughs> May, May 9th is, I'm sorry, so it's Thursday. It'll be a week tomorrow. When, and we're okay, recording yes, on, great. Recording May 1st. So, yeah, so May 9th, a little over a week away. Um, but yeah, talk about the band. I mean, um, how long you've been together for all that, all the fun stuff. Great. Yes. Um, so Baba hats, um, is myself, Carrie, um, and my husband, Chris, where we've been the, um, the longstanding members since the very beginning, we started the band together when we were in college at McAllister college in St. Paul, Minnesota. Um, we found each other's music on MySpace. We liked what we heard. Um, we had some mutual friends. And yeah, we just started writing together, um, sharing mixes, sort of like sharing um, influences and inspirations. And we came um, back from study abroad our senior year. Uh, we met our friend Noah, who had recently bought a bass guitar. And we said, perfect. Um, we're going to wrangle you into playing in this band and attending weekly band practice for the next six years. Um, and yeah, we played like our, our second show ever was the McAllister, McAllister College Battle of the Bands, which we did not win. But uh, one of the judges ran like a little record label in town and he signed us to his record label like a week later. Um and all kind of like went from there. That was sort of like the the thing we needed to be like, oh, I guess we are like a real band. Um, so we made a little EP. We started playing shows around town. Um, and yeah, that's like a decade, decade plus ago at this point. I was going to ask you, how long ago was that? Yeah, that was uh, 2012. The band yeah. formed. What are your thoughts on Battle of the Bands? I I, <laughs> I don't know. Like that... <sighs> So I used to, I've been in the media for a long time. So I would okay. be asked to judge them a lot of times. Okay. I'd, yeah. I'd always be happy to do so. But like looking back on it now, I feel like it's just so kind of silly. Sure. Yeah. I feel like, um, I know what you mean. Um, because it's really just like, um, it should be like friendship of the right. bands and like, uh, just a great set of music and also it's also relative of like who is the best band because also just like people have different tastes and like you know yeah. um but i just picture like so people yeah. up on stage like oh, i'm i'm battling you i'm battling this right band. like this is so <laughs> yeah, weird <totally>. <laughs> <laughs> it is kind of weird because normally yeah it usually is just like um you know like i feel like 
the community and camaraderie around being in a band and being like a touring musician and playing with other bands is like one of my favorite parts of of being in a band. So yes, right. I don't want to battle. I don't want to battle them. We're all no, in this no together. Battles. Or no battles. No yeah. battles. <laughs> <laughs> so that was over a decade ago. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so and you, you started a band with your, your husband. Um, how is that kind of, I mean, I always joke with my wife, kind of joking. I don't know if I could ever work with her. Sure. Yeah. Um, but I assume it works for you guys. <laughs> yeah. So far, it's still good. Um, yeah. It's kind of like in some ways, just all we've ever known um it's just like working together on the band and um yeah like touring together and recording together and um but yeah we seem to we seem to get along pretty well um and we're a good like a a good match i'm a little bit more like um more like a go 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 and like always have a to-do list and like always kind of like thinking about stuff and chris is a lot more like um patient and um it's like nice it's nice to have like those two two sides i think we keep each other motivated and grounded well it's it's balance right like and i think that i kind of been talking about balance a lot lately like in my you know full-time day job and just life in general yeah you know because everything i think everyone sees like stuff on social media and everything is like you know so amazing and awesome but like real life is not like that right there's ups and downs, ebbs and flows. And just like, I think the most important thing in life is just that balance. You know, there's going to be yep. days at work that are shitty, but there's going to be days at work that are awesome. And I think that's, that's yep. everywhere. There's no job. that Totally. Outside maybe being a musician, that's like, you know. We have some tough days. We have some tough right. days sometimes. But it's all about that balance. So you guys yes. balance each other out too. Totally. Yeah, awesome. absolutely. And I, I see like, I mean, the it makes sense now that you guys are husband and wife because um, I, I just watched a bunch of videos and oh yeah, um, it just kind of, you guys, it's a good, uh, it's a good mix. Yeah. You know, you're, you're, Absolutely. You can tell it's, it's a, you can have a good thing going. We think so for sure. And I do <laughs> think like, sometimes people ask us like, like, how do you, like, how have you like, you know, like stayed in the band like this long or like maintain the band as long. And I really do think it's because I have like a partner um, in it. Um, Cause it's sort of like, it's a very like self-conscious uh, inducing kind of industry. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just nice to have like another perspective or someone that's just like talk to things about. And like, um, even if we, even if neither one of us has the answer, just like the comfort of like, okay, like, I'm not the only one who doesn't know what's going on. Um, is nice. Yeah, something to bounce off off of. Yeah, and the and the music industry has changed so much in over the years too. From when you guys started, it's, it's kind of crazy how things yeah change. So it's I mean yeah totally. Um, and you guys just released a new album. We did self titled right. Self titled. Yep. Back on April twelfth. April 12th. Yeah. So yeah, we're about like, what, like two weeks in, yeah, three weeks in? Two, three weeks. Yeah. 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 And how, how's that been received so far? Pretty good. People seem to like it. I've been enjoying, I like that. Um, um, sometimes it's like, you know, it's like you pick the singles. Um, it's kind of like the songs like that you end up kind of showcasing. Um, but I kind of like that um, when I hear that, people are liking songs like from all over the record um makes it like a little tough when you're choosing singles or like when you're thinking of like what to play at the shows it's like well people want to hear like everything but like i think that's a great it makes me feel good that people seem to like um like the album in its entirety so that's nice that's great now are you on a label currently we are yes um we're on a different label than the label i mentioned in my origin story um but we're now on a label called uh, don giovanni out of philly okay now do they pick the singles that you know you will be releasing or is that kind of up to you guys um it's like a, a conversation like i seem to remember this time around um i think we i often would like advice on what the singles are because i just have a tough time choosing because i just have like a different relationship to the songs like sure 
I think they're all like great in their own way. And like, they're all so special and good. Um, so it's like, I, I appreciate like an outside perspective. Um, but I think we, we asked Joe who runs the label, like what the single should be. And he was kind of like, I don't know, like they're all pretty good. So like, whatever you guys think, I'm like, no, that's not what I need. Yeah. I need to hear. But, um, I think, I think he often has some, like some ideas and, and we have some ideas and kind of see where we overlap. But you're saying that the ones that you kind of liked off this is, is kind of ones that are, are that the audience is kind of gravitating to as well. Yeah. I, I would say that, um, so the singles were TPA board in the summer and my heart, your heart. Um, and people do have seemed to be enjoying, um, those three, maybe my heart, your heart, especially. And I'm glad people like that. That song, that one, um, we've been playing live um for a while now and it's it's been really fun to play live and so i'm glad people have been connecting with that song um but also i know i've gotten a lot of i was kind of surprised to hear that people seem to be enjoying um the the slower numbers on the record um lay low and happy um so i was thinking you know people want the like the upbeat poppy stuff but right. it, it's cool that they're drawn to sort of the the slow slow burners yeah i mean i I love all of it. Um, I, I've had a hard time myself kind of digging through it and, and kind of uh, picking my favorites so far. I haven't had a lot of time to to kind of uh, spend with it. Um, no, no, you're good. I knew that. I know that Let let Me In is a, mm -hmm. a favorite. I don't know if that's one. on the new one, though. Is that on the new one? Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. That was, that was one of my, that's like, what... initial. I really, that was maybe, that was, like, my... Um my favorite and it's still one of my favorites and I, I that one we went back and forth on if that would be a single because it just does have that kind of like energy mm -hmm. to it um but i think also you sort of like we got to like cheat a little bit because it wasn't a single but it's track one so you know that's the one people are going to queue up first so it's like you get a little bonus single one, in there yeah. yeah yeah that makes sense yeah and talk about uh bored in the summer does is, is a yeah. cool video for that Yes, I really have fun. I like making the videos. Um, I don't do it by myself, but our friend Dan does video work um, and he helps us. So he he films for us. Um, but I do, I like come up with the, the storylines and like edit the clips together. Um, and it's been cool to get get back into to video making. Um, it just feels like a, a, another place to sort of show off our personality and have some fun and... Uh, be a little goofy yes it's exactly that showing up yeah. the personalities um that's the one thing i noticed and it's like very like diy and it, yeah it, but totally. it's like it's fun it's like it's genuine it, it's uh relatable it's it's like cool it's cool yeah thank you so i assume that's kind of what you're going for absolutely for sure yeah, yeah. um as far as um you know, are you currently on tour now? We, no, we played, um, we sort of, we played like the first shows of like the, the record cycle. So we played some shows last weekend, um, in Minnesota, but then okay. we got to come home, you know, pack our bags, do some laundry, um, get ready to go. And so Friday will kind of be the first day where we're, we're out for a couple weeks. When you're traveling. Okay. Yeah. And I mean, what can people expect, whether it's, you know, different from previous uh, shows that you performed or, or maybe it's new for this, this record re release? What what can people expect from you guys as you as you, uh, you know, embark on this tour? Um, one exciting thing. Well, we will be a four piece band. We've we've gone back and forth between trios and um, a four piece over the years. So we're back to a four piece, which is really fun. Um, and uh, part of that is. Uh, as part of that, Chris will be playing synth on stage for the first time. So that's really fun. We we always use synths um, on the records, um, but have have never um, brought one on on tour um, for various like logistic reasons. And we often just like sort of um, change up the uh, arrangements um, just to suit sort of guitar uh, two guitars. Um, so it'll be fun to have the synth on stage because there's so many great synth parts on the record. Um, but then uh, you'll be getting hearing the old favorites 
the usual uh witty banter um that kind of thing nice and I don't know if this is, I imagine this is not for every date, but on May 9th at the River Street Jazz Cafe, you have uh, Brianna Collins from Tiger's Jaw. Mm -hmm. Yep. And Rosary Guild uh, from our area, both of them. And Brianna, her last name has changed. And I feel badly that I don't know this. She got married in the past year or two. Okay. Yeah. And I forget what it is. <laughs> I should know no, this. That's I interviewed her and I used to work with her and I forget what oh, nice, her, yeah. Yeah, I forget what her name is. But are you familiar with uh, either of those projects? I had not been I had not been familiar before. Um we were playing the show and we're deciding um what openers to have. Um but we're really excited. We always like it's like cool to be able to play, like to tour the country and you know, like sort of be um uh like exposed to different music scenes like around the country because there are like so many great bands all over the place that um you might not otherwise get to hear unless yeah. you travel to their city um so yeah we're excited yeah both those bands are excellent i mean tiger's jaw i think they were just out in um uh, california maybe i think they just great. got back yeah, recently cool. and rosary guild i mean they are very selective with when they play it's not often. And so when they do, it's like a big deal. But that should be amazing. I mean, a great show. Absolutely. Um, yeah, I'm hoping to be able to make it out for that. Yes, I hope you will. Uh, have you played the Jazz Cafe before? No, we have never played um, in your town before. This is the first time. Yeah. Is this your first time, like, in, even in the area? Uh, I think to play a show... Yes, because we're it's like somewhat near Scranton. Is that true? Mm -hmm. Okay, we've never we haven't played a show in Scranton before. Um, I have eaten a really good sandwich in Scranton though on a drive <laughs> from where? Um, Abe's. Abe's. Yeah. The I think what's that? What that's called? Um, the kosher deli. Yeah, the deli. Yep. Okay, it's actually like a block or two from my office in Scranton. Oh, really? Yeah, I work full time uh, in radio, actually. Yeah. Um, well, I, I used to work in radio. I left radio. I was working with Brianna at uh, a place called Axel Red Screen Printing uh, for nice. three years, and then I went back to radio. So, yeah, I'm about two blocks from from that Abe's. I I had a really good sandwich there. Would what did you have? I what think it's that? just the classic classic Reuben. Okay. And it was quite good. Okay. That's fair. Yeah. I didn't know if it could top my favorite sandwich in the country, which is in Columbus, Ohio, but it was really close. And what is that? That's at Katzinger's Deli okay. in Columbus. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, this like area. a lot of sandwiches. <laughs> well, this area is well known for their food. <laughs> I, have to, I, have to, I have to say. But. Yeah, but I think yeah, I don't think we've played anywhere really close. We played um, Philadelphia, of course. We've played State College a few times, okay. um, and we've played um, played Allentown one time, and Millvale. Okay, not familiar, yeah. but sure. I think I think that was in Pennsylvania. Um, also, both both Millvale and Allentown were like college okay. shows. Yeah. Well, I feel like I don't know how much time you're going to have in our area, but uh, yeah. this area is well known for its pizza. Okay, don't if mind you're if into I do. that kind of in that kind of stuff. You got to hit up. Yes, there's a few places you can. I mean, there's a, a NAPA pizza review on Facebook you can go to. There's also okay. uh, Dimitri's food fight. He does pizza reviews as well for our, our okay. area and food reviews wow. in general. But yeah, check those out. But yeah, okay. Angelo's the sweet sauce. You got to check that out. Wow, um, okay. Yeah, if you have time. Sounds good. If you have time. Okay. But um, I saw recently you did uh, uh, an AMA, Ask Me Anything on Reddit. Yeah. How'd that go? It was good. Um, it was our first time doing that. We were a little nervous that no one would ask us any questions. We were happy that some people were there. People did. They did. Any off the wall? Um, no, no, nothing like nothing um too too out there. The, I think the only thing was um why do fools fall in love? Which is a tough it was a tough 
I I just didn't know the answer. Fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah. Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> Did I also see that you're in another band as well? Yeah, I just we just Chris and I just um started another band with our friend Alana. And that's called, um, it's me- called Mega Mega Sound. Mega Sound. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Is that like a different creative space for you guys, or were you guys just bored and you wanted to just kind of spread yourself? I don't. Thin? Yeah, I don't. I wouldn't say it was like because of anything with Bad Hats. Um, like I'm, we're still, we're like working on our our fifth record like already like still got lots of um ideas and like excited um for baba hat stuff but it was mostly from wanting to work with our friend alana because she's just like um been a great friend for a really long time and we've um just like love talking to each other about the music business and like our favorite bands and um she's just someone i really enjoy um sort of sharing my uh my thoughts with them, my ideas with and so it's just like always been a dream to work with her in in a band um but yeah but we're kind of using it as an opportunity to to um sort of try some things that we might not do in bad hat so more like um like rock focused i guess you could say it's like um sort of like pointing to early uh 2000s rock oh, cool. music is like the inspiration yeah that's awesome and there's yeah. music available out there now no not yet not we're yet. Okay. we're still in the process of of recording we played our very first show which was fun um and we have uh one song that's been been mixed sitting in the vault cool. um but yeah, when we get home from tour, we got some days planned to finish up the the record. So that's exciting. Okay, I, I'm I'm excited for that too. I love yeah. early two thousand rock. Me they, too. They call it like butt rock. I think now these days. You know? <laughs> for sure. <laughs> <laughs> you know the Creeds, the Nickelbacks, the yep. you know, all that kind of stuff. I love that. I, love I know it a lot. it's funny. It's like sometimes I think about how cool it was to grow up in a time. When like, uh, you turn on like the top forty radio station, and it was like, at the same time, like Britney Spears, followed yeah. by like Lincoln Park, yeah, followed by like TLC. It's just it was so cool. It was like so much, so many different sounds and like, um, voices and vibes. Um, and it didn't seem weird to me at the time that all those were happening like at once. So it was just like, yeah, that's just like that's just music. Yeah. Well, I work for a, a classic rock station. It's called Rock 107. Cool. And um, it's funny because, you know, the late 90s and early 2000s is kind of considered classic rock at this point. Okay. So we've yeah. been, we've kind of been adding, um, you know, that, that, uh, those years into our, our catalog and our library. And some people are, are loving it. I mean, I'm 41. So like, I love the fact that, you know, that music has kind of returned to the radio, but there's people who hate it. We just got a call like okay. two days ago saying like Green Day, why is this Green Day playing on this classic rock station? It's like, dude, like Green like Day 96. I know, yeah. It's 96. Like, what are we doing? They're just yeah, I know. They're just having a I think that's a that's a them. That's a them thing. Yeah. They're they're realizing their their place in time and space. <laughs> <laughs> We're getting old. <laughs> Well, yeah. you, know, you know you can only play the who and, and zeppelin for so long i mean like that audience yeah. I, mean, I mean that those will stand the test of time right like i'm a huge fan of those yeah. bands too but like our audience unfortunately you know rock 107 started in 1980 um so like a lot of the audience that was tuned in back then are unfortunately dying so you have to like yeah you know introduce you know classic rock of the 90s and 2000s to you know guys like me who are old but yeah. not not dying yet hopefully yeah <laughs> <laughs> that's cool well, best of luck with uh mega sound that sounds exciting yes thank you yes i know hopefully we'll have someone out soon uh how long is your tour for is that a quick one or it it is two like basically like two quick tours back to back so we're going out to the east coast and back in like two weeks and then we'll be home for a few days and then we are flying to uh paris 
and oh. doing a week of shows in the UK and Europe. Wow. Is that your first time doing yeah. that? Yes, it is. What, We're what really excited. Thoughts? What are your thoughts? I it's it is something we've like been thinking about for like a really long time. It's like always been like a goal of the band. So it's just it's really exciting um to do it. I'm trying to keep the perspective of how how cool it is and how um excited we are for it in the midst of like all the logistical things we're trying to figure out like Stressful, it right? is a, has yeah it has been a lot of like get the hotels get the flights get the like car like the the paper you need to cross the border get the van get the equipment um so trying not to trying to cross off the to-do list and then get back to being like it's so exciting we're going over there and playing shows right um are there any areas you're excited about the most or you're just kind of just the whole thing is just kind of like a, a, a dream come true. Yeah. I mean, basically that one, um, uh, super excited for London. That's always been like one of our, like the like top cities on like streaming. Um, so we, we felt like we had, uh, a fan base there. Um, so I'm excited, especially to like bring the songs there and, um, uh, meet, meet people at the merch table um and then paris will be really cool too that's i basically i studied abroad in paris and that's where i started writing the very first like bad bad hats like what would become bad bad hats songs um so it'll be a nice like kind of like full circle thing to be back there that's awesome yeah that's awesome and when you started writing music and, and performing and you started this band did you ever think that things would be progressing like they have been um, I don't know. I guess like, um, it's hard to remember exactly what I like. And it's like, you almost can envision it because I don't know. It's just, it's even more like exciting and like, um, like even more of an adventure than you can probably even like consider. Right. Um, but I definitely, I think I definitely hoped, like, I feel like, um, um, I feel like someone asked me this the other day too. It's just like, did you, did you think it would be like, did you always know like you were going to get like this far or something? And it's like, I do think I always had the um, goal of like writing songs, like professionally, like whatever that means. Like I just knew that I really loved writing songs and it would be cool if I could just do that like right. all the time. Yeah. Um. So yeah. So I think from from a young age, it, that was like definitely like something I knew would be really really fun, and it's just um been exciting and surprising and um cool to see how it's all sort of turned out. Well, I asked a question because like everyone starts a band hoping like that that's how it plays out, right? But you know things happen. Yeah. Uh, you know people have to get like you know, quote unquote, real jobs. Right. Right. Um, you know, they might have families that they have to take a, a, a hiatus uh, to take care of their family yeah, and it, totally a, a multitude of reasons. Right. So, but it's, it's a lot of times it doesn't ever happen. And yep. it's, I feel like it's, it's kind of, you know, maybe it has, or it's definitely like on that trajectory for you guys. And you have tons of uh, listeners on Spotify and social media followers and, that's not easy to get. No, it's not. And we we do feel like it's been like really slow and steady, like over the 10, 10 years, um, sort of like follow by follow, you know? Yeah. Um, and that's kind of, I don't know, like I feel like in the early days, um, like we didn't know at the time that this was like a good mindset, but I feel like we just from the start had a good way of, um, just like being excited for like small, small gains, you know, it's just like at some of our first shows, you know, it's like you sell, you sell a t-shirt and you're like, that's awesome. Like we sold a t-shirt tonight and like we made a, we made a fan. Yeah. Um, and since then it's, it's easy to sort of like, um, be looking to like the next thing and like wanting, wanting more and sort of like not having a good perspective of like, but how cool is it that like we're doing this now? Yeah. Um, and I think it, it served us well that for some reason we were, we were able to sort of like, um, kind of like 
be happy in those early moments of just like we made like two fans tonight and that is awesome um because that's uh, that's how it's been for like the whole band it's just like show by show you know um i always work at the merch table um that's i don't awesome. think anyone can pry me away from the merch table it's like my favorite <laughs> part of the night um because i just get to talk to everyone and like say hi and um meet people and like um and also like people i've met come back to the merch table and i you know it's like a nice reunion um so yeah things like that i think have been um the most like rewarding in the band to just sort of see the see the audience grow and um make connections and meet people and so yeah i think i hope we always always continue that no matter what i don't know you very well at all right but i feel like that's gonna kind of be consistent along your however far you make it and however big you make it i think that's still gonna be part of who the band is as a whole cool thank you yeah i gotta i gotta stay humble you know yeah. <laughs> and i feel as far as your merch goes like is that something you guys create on your own i feel like you're very kind of like you know artsy and kind of like involved in that process um chris does sometimes yeah. i have ideas but i'm not very like visually artist inclined I knew um it. i knew it but yes chris chris does a lot of the design um work for us um, which has been awesome. Um, but then sometimes too, it's fun to to work with other artists and and make that that kind of connection yeah. too. Um, yeah, and we um have worked with the same screen printer in Minneapolis since the band started. Um, cool. so that's been great. Yeah, it's a cool industry. I mean, the whole the whole process in general. Um, I think bands are like, I, I don't know how involved like, no, Axl Rose was in, when he was printing merch, right? Like probably not right, at all. Right, right. <laughs> they were yeah. just, you know, making wildly successful albums and selling millions of merch and all that kind of stuff. But like bands these days, and I think they're very just involved with like, you know, I'm I'm an artist. I'm gonna not only create music, but I'm also gonna create the merch that we we sell to our uh, our audience. Yeah, because Brianna does that for uh, Tiger's Jaw. A lot cool. of the stuff. They yeah, do. yeah, it's very totally. Yeah, I know. Right. I love. I love the. I love the the bands that have like the 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 one like screen printing press like in their basement. You know, like making the making the shirts. That's cool. I think Before that's like started, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, I have more questions to let you go. Um, some of your favorite artists that are around today. Uh, who might those be? Um, I really love the Beths. Um. They're so great. The, we had the Beths, the Beths like the Elizabeth, Beths. the Beths. Okay. They're All from right. New Zealand. Um, we had the pleasure of touring with them in 2019 um, and getting to know them. And they're just really great people, but also just um, amazing songwriters, musicians. Like they're all like, you know, like jazz trained musicians making like really catchy, fun, pop rock music. Um, which is a great combination. Um, lots of background vocals, which you don't hear a lot anymore, but like real um, all in BGVs, which is great. And just like really smart lyric writing and great melodies. Um, so they're definitely one of my favorites. Um, who else? I feel like um, I always, I always just, um, I'm like a playlist person. Like I love, um, just like being out and about like i'm like the person like in the coffee shop like standing on a chair trying to shazam yeah. like the song <laughs> i'm hearing um like i just love hearing music like in the wild and discovering stuff and yeah. hearing a song on the radio and being like oh man i forgot about the song and, like i'll add it to my my yearly playlist i make a playlist for, for every year so i feel like i'm always listening to like a lot of like random stuff um but another band I really have been into lately, also speaking of like early 2000s rock kind of sounds, um, there's this Dutch band called Oot, which is spelled the E-U-T. Um, and they have this album. Um, well, all their music is really great, but they have this one album that has like a mouth on the cover. Um, and it just it just really reminds me of like, you know, sort of like um, Franz Ferdinand era kind of. Mm -hmm rock stuff like yeah 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 it's like oh, nice. the guitar playing is super cool and like also like really great melodies and interesting um like chord changes um so i've been really enjoying that 
that record. That's cool. Let's check those out. That's why I asked. Yeah. I always love to like hear what people are into. Cool. Yeah. I can try and, and find it out too. Um, and it's cool what you said too about uh music in the wild. You don't know you don't, you don't know who it is, and so you're standing on a chair, it's just I mean, one of my <laughs> yeah. favorite things as a young kid was going to the record store. Yes. Um, I couldn't tell you how many records I bought, uh, just being in there and going to the counter guy saying, Who who is this right now? Yeah, totally. I'm like, oh, it's this. I'm like, okay, I'll take it. Thank you. Okay, yes. I found Jack's mannequin that way. Oh, cool. Nice. Yeah. They do the... dark blue, dark yes. blue. Yes. Yes. Great song. <laughs> Great album. Great album. Yeah. I like I like Jack's mannequin more than so it's probably Jack's mannequin greater than something corporate although it's cor it's close um and then he's got the andrew man in the, in the wilderness which i mm, i like yes, too but yes. like i feel like jack's mannequin um something corporate and then andrew man are my favorite like what he's done so far yes um, totally nice my opinion for what it's yeah worth. <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> Uh, as someone who's been able to, you know, create music, record music, uh, go on tour, you know, you're, we're talking about going uh, to the UK. Um, what advice would you give to an aspiring musician? Um, I guess, um, yeah, like well, one thing I would say, like, sometimes it feels hard to give advice because one thing I really believe is that, like, there are really like a million paths to like the same goal, which if the goal is just like to be a, a working musician, like, you know, some people go viral, some people, you know, play a lots of local shows. Some people, you know, get on a big tour. I don't know. It's just like it, everyone's story is like really different. So, um, I wouldn't, um, it's like, you know, I wouldn't compare yourself to anyone or, or, or think you're doing something wrong. If you're, if you're, if your story isn't lining up with someone else's story, because it's, it just never will. Um, but also I think to me, like, I feel like the thing that really opened up the music world to me was just like collaborating with other people, like, um, meeting Chris, like meeting my bandmates, um, meeting our producer who made a lot of our records, just like, um, being engrossed in a, a music scene has been so awesome and it just um, just makes it fun too to like to meet great people while making music um, so find people who share your love of music and um, who it sounds fun to play with um, and then just yeah just like write lots of songs um, and and uh, like I, there is just so much where like in the, the modern era, like musicians kind of have to do so many other things besides making music. It's just like running the social media and like <laughs> booking the shows and yep. um, printing the merch maybe, um, which is important. And like, we're all, we're all doing it and we're all trying to figure it out. But um, at the end of the day, you know, uh, make sure you still are having fun writing the songs and, and making your art and, and try to leave, leave room for that, that too. Yeah. One thing I say, you know, we talked about balance before, but I also am a big uh, advocate for it only takes one. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe you, you play that one show in front of that one person yeah. who knows the right person. Yeah. Or or you, the, the in front of the right band who takes you on a tour. It, it, it just takes one, you know, and yep. you, you never know when that could be. It's just like you just got to nope. keep, you know, stay true to yourself and keep plugging away. And absolutely. You never know what's going to happen. Exactly. Yep. That's the way. So yeah, like you said, just keep, keep doing your thing and, you know, know that like, uh, uh, just be ready when the luck happens, but it's, it's coming. Yeah. There's a saying I should know it by now. Cause I try and quote it a lot and I, I just, something about luck, like luck is, uh, you know, when preparation meets opportunity mm -hmm. or something like yep. that. I totally. Forget. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. And, uh, one final question. I saw that, um, you were teaching a songwriting class? Yep, I just, just finished up. up. You just wrapped yep. that up. Yeah, what was that like? It was amazing, honestly. Like, such a cool opportunity. It was, like, one of those things where I had been thinking about it for a while. Like, I was like, that could be cool. And I just, um, 
presented the idea to um, the English department at McAllister where I went to school and where I, there are still like professors there who were my professors and, cool. you know, could vouch, vouch for me. Um, and the, but then when they're like, yeah, you can do it. Like it's happening. I was like, Oh, <laughs> like I did like, I feel like there was part of me that was like, I didn't think you guys would like actually let me do this. Um, <laughs> so it was like a little hectic cause I had never done that before. And, um, yeah, it was like a lot of, a lot of time building the class and figuring out building a syllabus and making all the slideshow presentations every week. Um, this was a lot of work, but it was also just like really, um, rewarding and fulfilling and like all my students were so cool and creative and I like loved hearing their their songs and hearing um you know their songs kind of grow and um hearing them work together um so yeah I was like I really didn't I was like so sad to have the last class I was like oh I can't believe I'm not gonna see y'all again um like all in class together so um bittersweet though too because I just feel like so lucky that I got to meet all of them and um, be a part of like their, their songwriting journey. Yeah. Do you think that's something you'll continue to do? I think, I think so. Like, especially now that I like, I put in all the work to build the class. I feel like if I do it a second time, it'll be like a lot easier. Yeah. Um, so that's certainly appealing. Um, but yeah, I really enjoyed it. So yeah, I would definitely, I would definitely do it again. Um, it's that's fun. Great. And I, I know like every time I do it, I'll, you know, learn something else too. Yeah. But that's so great. Just because like, you know, I wouldn't call it giving back by any means. It's just, but like having somebody of your caliber, like be able to, you know, help others and, and teach and, and, you know, kind of foster that, that whole thing. Totally. And I, yeah, I hope that they, you know, I did my, I did my best to try to, you know, answer their questions and sort of, um, you know, yeah. Be someone who could just like um, be there to bounce ideas off of. Um, so it's cool. And it was cool. I got to leverage my, my connections to the music scene to have like some, some cool special guests come and talk yeah. to the class. So that raised my, my credibility for sure. Yeah. But I mean, <laughs> it's, it's such a rewarding experience. And like, like, I think people need that. Like students need that. And they need, it's such an important part of like the process. Yeah. And I do think it's like, it is one of those things where like, it is such like a weird career path in some ways so i also think it's like it's nice to be able to just uh learn from someone who is just sort of like making indie rock music and be like this is what it it looks like to be the you know a uh, musician just like touring and writing songs and not doing anything crazy but making it work that's awesome well carrie thank you so much i really appreciate your time bad bad hats are going to be in northeastern Pennsylvania, River Street Jazz Cafe, May 9th, uh, with Brianna Collins from Tiger's Jaw, Rosary Guild, and it. it I hope to be there. Um, I'm going to be at a show the Monday prior to see Primus, okay. which uh, nice. AJ is also involved with booking at the Kirby Center. That's his like full time job. So AJ's got a busy week. So he's got he's booked okay. private at the Kirby Center. <laughs> got you guys at the Jazz Cafe. It's gonna be busy. Nice. That's good though. My kids got baseball practice. Like yes. Uh, we just bought a puppy. Like life is oh, paid yeah. off right now. Yeah. I, I really. I mean, it, it's it's. I shouldn't say it's been a long time, but, um. You know, I like a lot of music, but it's this has been one of those like oh this is really great, and I need to go see them play live, especially when they're in my backyard because there's been so many nice. times where. It happens and either you don't yeah. know about it or you just can't go and then you're kicking yourself in the ass. So hopefully I can make it out to that show on May 9th. But um, you know, where can people find you uh, online if they wanted to check you guys out, whether it be at the May 9th show at the Jazz Cafe or uh, yep. down there? Um, well, badbadhats.com has all things Bad Bad Hats. We got the domain. Nice. Um, you can find us there. Um, but also we're at Bad Bad Hats, like in most, I think almost all the social media site so yeah instagram instagram is where we mostly live though okay. so if you want those daily updates that's where to find us that's the cool place that's like there's no like politics there there's no like trash it's kind of a, <laughs> a better place to live right <laughs> yes totally um and I, yes and we we're on um, we're like basically unable to have multiple social media sites running at once so we get we gave up on 
on trying to make TikTok a thing a long time uh, ago. So <laughs> I feel like you guys would be okay though, because you're you're creative. I, I just TikTok for me is not not a place to be. But okay, yeah. <laughs> but for you it would be. It could be for you. And Thank then I, I I would be I would be bad if I didn't ask where the name came from. My last question. Oh, bad um, bad hats. Yes. Um from the Madeline children's books. The the girls in the yellow hats in Paris with the nun. Okay. Um there's a book called Madeline and the Bad Hat. That's mm. what's from. Mm -hmm. I was not uh, expecting that. But very cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Well, Carrie, thanks again so much. Uh, best of luck on this tour. Uh, like I said, I hope to see you on uh, Thursday, May 9th at the Jazz Cafe. And um, make sure you try some pizza if you have time. Yes, we will definitely have some pizza. Awesome. Hope to see you soon. Thank you. All right. Thank you.